Hello dear students, welcome to the lecture 2 of Advanced Programming with C Sharp course. So today we will start learning about databases with Microsoft SQL Server. To be able to show you how to install it, I have uninstalled it from my computer. So I will reinstall it from scratch so that you can learn how to download and install it. To do that, let's search for Microsoft SQL Server. When we open the page, it opens this page. Okay, so we will download the developer edition, which is the free edition of Microsoft of the SQL Server for developers. It is downloaded. Let's open it. So there are several options. It is best to download media and then install it. We can choose the media downloading options here. I will just let it as default because I see they are correct. ISO format, English language and the folder here. It is downloading. In addition to the Microsoft SQL Server, we will also use Microsoft SQL Server Management Studio here. It is at the same page at the bottom. Download SQL Server management studio so let's download it as well and meanwhile they are downloading we will continue to do our programming so i am clicking this there are several issues if your windows is not windows 10 then if you don't download the latest microsoft sql server and sql server management studio they may not work on your computer so if you have older version of windows you have to download older version of microsoft sql server and probably sql server management studio also i suggest you you to upgrade your windows to windows 10 because of this reason so that you can use the latest technology latest software started downloading meanwhile let's compose our week 2 project continue to recap what we have seen previous servers and start learning new things as well let's compose the project so i will pick vpf up.net as you know this is .net core older framework is named as .net framework i will pick the repository the directory lecture 2 project is getting initialized the project is ready today i would like to recap dictionaries lists and for each loops let's start with the list box we will also add custom class objects to the list box first let's define its dimension now we can see it after setting some dimension okay let's give it a name so we can access it. its name as box main all right let's add a button and let's compose event here i want to add custom objects to my list box use them when click it or do anything else we want so to do that i will compose a class let's name it as student or student it will have some properties student number as integer string student name what else we can use how do i compose it uh, quickly i type prop and then i hit double tap here let me show Drop double tap tap it all composes this template i can name it as something like this student now in this list box i want to show values let's get some names list from internet i sign them randomly and then add a boolean i will add text file okay we have some male names i will append female names okay we have some female names and male names what we are going to do is we will compose a certain number of instances of this student class and then we will get them displayed on the list box so to do that we will use observable collection you see i have to add the reference adding it so this is observable collection let's name it as students or oc student so when i click the temp button uh, by the way i will initialize it when the application starts so it will be ready to i will generate 100 random instances or let's say 10 instances of students how am i going to do that by the way i have to change this type of this to this type of observable collection into student which is my class custom class so we will generate a number i will make it something like eight digits so Let's compose our random seed. Let's initialize uh, an instance of student. Initialize it by with default values. What were the default values? Integer boolean. Integer is zero. Boolean is false. Strings are null. So let's assign the student number first. So the student number will be equal to my round next. And I will make it being 10 million 999 okay so it will be something eight digit however i have to also keep that no students get the same number because you know the students number should be unique however right now i won't care about that so the student number will be like this and student name to compose student names i will get two 
random picks from our files and merge them. To be able to access these files, they have to be inside my debug folder to be able to access them directly. So whenever the button is clicked, I can load them into a string list, something like this, mail names equal to file dot by the way the file is not available as you see because i have to add its reference from here using system io read all lines okay this will read it into array by default so the name will be mail t names txt then to list so the to list is the link you this is method inside file class right now it's ready Let's copy and paste it like this for female names. Female. Okay, so is this enough? I mean, will it work when I run the application right now? No, it will throw an error. Let me show you that. Which error it will throw? It will throw unhandled exception as the file not found. You will see. Okay, you see system IO file not found exception. Even though I have added them to my project, they are not available in the debug folder. There is build action. Build action means that whenever you build your application, rebuild or run it, and before you run it, it will build it. That action will happen. The build action will be copy if never. None. Okay, we don't need anything. So it is working. When we open the debug folder, we will see they are there inside our debug folder. And whenever I change files, they will be copied again. Okay, so they are here. As you can see, copied into debug folder. Download is done. So let me show you how to install SQL Server. I have opened the download folder and I right click on the ISO and click mount. It may change in your computer if your language is different. Then I right click setup and run as administrator. Okay, then we click installation and we click new SQL Server standalone installation this one and then we specify the free edition as developer the license okay let's continue writing our code meanwhile it is working oh it is working okay so now we have the random number first we need to decide whether it will be male or female let's decide male or female as something like this next between zero and one so you see max value exclusive upper bound so it can be either zero or one exclusive so it doesn't include the max value so it can be zero and one currently if random number is equal to zero i will set them as male okay so this true as false so this is in line if this is equal to let me show you if equal to zero okay so you see this is equal to this one however you see how cleaner it is to write as this way then i will use a switch to use switch you see the code snippet has appeared after i have typed swe and i double click top and the switch template is generated as a switch i will use boolean mail which values we will have is we will have case as true if it is male and then we will have case as false not male okay so if it is male we will use the mail list so i have generated two strings they are currently set as null it is male the case true i will assign them like this equal to the mail names next it will be between zero and the number of items inside that list because it is exclusive the upper bound so something like this so you see we are using copy paste code we could bypass this if we were using the references of list however it is a bit advanced topic therefore i will just pass it for this time so you will not get confused this time we will be using the female name we will set the object variable to the name equal to first name plus surname finally there will be an email so we can set the email something like this let me show equal to first name to lower we need to trim the special characters accent let's find it there is regex option so i will set the email as student name replace the character with this for to be able to reference regex i have to add as this system takes regular expression regular expressions is like a new programming language it's the topic of another lesson or course therefore i won't enter it however this will remove all characters inside the given string other than English letters. This is defining its range. I will just keep it and then I will add like 
Gmail com. Okay, once we have composed our student object, then we will add them into our list. Okay, add student. So this will add my random student object into my OC students observable collection. There is another key issue. If I define this inside here, it will break everything. Okay, so I will show you the both cases. However, before we progress, first let's check how our code is working so far. And before even going there, let's continue with our SQL installation. Okay, it is pass it, so I click next. Okay, here what we need is database engine. Others are not necessary. However, let's add analysis services. We may use it. You see there are some other shared features. So many actually. Like machine learning, R, Python, Java, full text, semantic search. Probably we won't be using them in the course. Okay, let's add this one as well. Need it. Okay, probably we won't be needing them. So let's click next. You see they are all default folders, program files, Microsoft SQL Server. Okay, keeping the default instance name is important because if you change the instance ID, then when you reference something or when you try to connect it may cause you some problems so i am keeping mssql server as the instance name okay okay here i won't touch anything next okay here we will use windows authentication however you can also access it with root password something like this let me show you also need to add the current user as well even if you use windows authentication you see sql server administrators have unrestricted access Okay, it has added. This is my computer name. It is very important when you connect to your SQL Server instance. I will show you that. I am also setting a password, something as 1234. 1234. Okay, next. Okay, here I don't touch anything, but I am also adding current user to add as an administrator. These access restrictions are topic of another course, so I won't be delving into them let's continue okay this is the summary let's click install okay now it will install sql server 2019 developer edition at the background now let's return to our application let's test our application until so far how it is working and to test it in debug mode i have put a breakpoint here okay when i click the test button let's go step by step so our random object is composite our lists are composite you see here here let's continue with our for loop so the student object is composite from student class you see the default values mail is false student number is zero student email and name are null because they are string type first we generate the random number something like this we decide male or female okay it is decided as female because male is false then we enter our switch statement let's see our first name and let's see surname so it appears that this was exclusive i see the error okay i will give you 10 seconds find the error here okay the error is this you see the list uh, the number of elements in the male list is much bigger than the number of elements in female list therefore when you give as an input to male list count we got an error okay i have fixed it now i am putting my breakpoint here i have removed the previous breakpoint okay so the first name and the surname decided you see this time it is male the student name is assigned you see it has non-english characters as well let's convert it into email okay it is converted as email something like this and then it is added to our list okay so it is working as expected what else we need we will set the item source of box main as equal to observable collection i am setting it here by the way even though we are initializing it here we can assign it like this because the main window is executed this is the constructor of main window class after these fields and properties are initialized so if we put breakpoint in the both place we can see the order of the application initialization okay you see this is first initialized it even though it is written under the method then this will be assigned therefore this is not null okay it is initialized at the beginning there is no objects when i click test you see they are coming like this however it is showing me as an object because i didn't set 
its display member. I also need to set its display member. It is set with display member path as equal to let's see what i want to show as display member display member path is set as get and set so as a display member path i will use a string and i will set it as display member name it however i will overwrite the get method so the get method will be overridden this okay won't have a set method it will have only get and the get method will return this dot i think first i will display the student number string and zero and then i will add a top character and then uh, i will add the student name name i think we can also add the email plus email when i try to access display member of an instance what i will get you will see let me show you this is actually pretty awesome however it may throw me an error that i'm trying to access oh yeah i have to first set it so the path will be equal to like this so let's run the application yeah it should automatically handle null values in this case i believe okay so random student initialize it when i hover my mouse okay you see the display member path is displayed as zero and null let's set the name the name is set when i hover my mouse so the display member path is something like this now and after i set the email now the display member path is something like this you see how cool it is this is an awesome feature i think we can even customize it even more let's customize it i will use dollar inline format id top name name top okay, i will also leave an app space email email okay now we can remove this part now you get the idea i believe now it's display on the list box now it is working perfectly as we wanted so okay let's let's install the sql server development tool i am closing the installer of sql developer edition is successfully installed now inside the downloads i will run the sql server management studio okay, i'm just clicking install I'm hoping that it will install without requiring me to restart. It is working. So the 10 values are uh, generating. I think we can add some more top characters here. So it will be better. Here we can see them. I think we can also add the gender as well. So let's add the gender here. I will also write an inline if query inside here. So true, then it will be male. So we have added gender option as well. So let's run. Now we can see when I click again, they will be added to the end of the list and automatically updated. And here, and here, I can add as many as I want. To generate. Okay, so you see this is generating a test data for your project because sometimes you want to generate some test data for your project so that you can test your method this is hard to understand but this is what we are doing here we cannot also set play members let's try that as well so you see it is giving me an error because it is read only because we have only get method if we didn't put get and we have put only set it would be write only now i want to show you something else when we click an element i want to display that click it element values one by one so how am i going to do that is i think selection change or selected let's first try the selected method so let's show message show list box main selected item dot okay now the selected item is type of student therefore i will convert it to that type with explicit conversion and then i have another parenthesis and then i can show for example student number and to, okay and let's format it as well let's run the application it says we have an error it says that listbox doesn't have like let's let's make a selection change let's remove the previous one. since we are binding a custom class we can access its each member values so when i select one okay you see i am displaying its id individually i'm displaying its id you see how useful it is like this okay and okay so this is important with this approach you can do so many things this is pretty advanced and useful programming now we can start seeing databases all right so how we are going to use the database now we are going to start it we have installed microsoft sql server and sql when i type sql 
and I click apps doesn't show so let's type as management okay here Microsoft SQL Server Management Studio I am opening it I think we can also find it here under here maybe yeah here it is now getting open it this is the graphical user interface to manage sql server databases objects whatever you want i click it connect so it is connecting the default name with instance so i will show you again from here click it okay so server type is database engine there are other engines but we are going to use database you see the server name this is the name of my Computer, you can also find your computer name from, I think, after I have opened this page, I right click this PC and I click properties. Here it shows my device ID, product ID, device name, processor, my Windows type, Windows edition and whatever. So this is my device name. Actually, this is the name that we have installed our server during the installation. Then I am choosing Windows authentication. I can also use it. SQL Server Authentication and for login I can use SA System Administrator and the password is 1234 okay, when I click connect it will connect also so you can use both way you can use Windows Authentication or you can use the definite authentication during your installation okay both is possible so here under databases we see the system database and database synapses so I will compose our first database as I click databases, right click, I click new database. Okay, so the database name will be as school. The owner will be default. Here the path of the database file will be located. The file name will be automatically decided. I won't touch them. There is also auto growth size, max size, initial size, and then there are options. Here you can see the recovery model. You should leave it as full. Compatibility, you see, you can define with older version of SQL servers or with the latest version. Containment time, I do none. Okay, collation. Collation is important because according to your collation, the data you can hold in your database changes. It also changes your database's behavior when you do a search, insert, update, delete. So you should pick your collation according to your needs there is turkish or english whatever you want any language probably so the english is defined as i think latin here and you see there are some extensions each one of them means something else so i will show you the turkish one for this time here okay you see there are so many options which one should you choose so if you want your accent to be sensitive then you have to pick AS. AS means it is accent sensitive. What does accent sensitive means? Let's say I will type here so everyone can understand. Okay, let's say your name is Aisha. If you pick it, if you pick your collation as accent sensitive and you search for Aisha, then you will get no results because it is accent sensitive. If you pick, by the way, accent sensitive is AS. If you pick AI which means accent insensitive then I say will return I share as well so this is about accent sensitive and accent insensitive then there is also case sensitivity if you pick your collation as case sensitive so the case sensitive is CS you see here CS then if you search for I share in your database you will not get result i share however if you pick your collation case insensitive case ci then i share or i share will return all cases okay so let's save this collation explanation okay so this is about collation there are also some other options you can look for them on the internet if you need however usually you don't need so we will set our database according to our needs if you if you want that to be accent sensitive then we set accent sensitive if we don't want then we can set as accent insensitive so i will set it as case insensitive and accent sensitive or we can do as case insensitive and accent insensitive as you can see here this one is case insensitive and accent insensitive the language also defines which characters will be available in your database so as i said compose your database as your need there are also other options here 
update statistics, create statistics, and other things. These are all more advanced features. For now, I won't be touching them because we just need to learn how to access programmatically to our database modified. Okay, so our school database is created, composed, then we will compose tables because the Microsoft SQL Server is relational database. Therefore, it have tables and relations between tables. So let's compose our first table. The database design is entirely a different course. It is pretty complex and if you don't do it properly then you may have a lot of uh, performance issues. I will have these variables inside this user table. First column name will be student ID. I will define it as integer. Will I allow nulls? Nulls means that if you have objects that have null variable having student IDs, then you can select all of nulls. By the way, the database null and C sharp null are different. So don't get confused. In C sharp, integer cannot be null. It can be only default zero. However, in database, it may be null. Database null, by the way. So I want all of nulls, then it will have student name. Okay, there are now database types, anchor and varchar and other things. So let's see them as well. Database, column, data types, list. Okay, character size. So the character is fixed. Okay, let's read them, each one of them. So the character, which one is character? Character is this one, char. And then you define the size like 10. 20, 100, whatever you want. Let's read the definition. A fixed length string can contain letters, numbers, and special characters. The size parameter specifies the column length in characters, can be from 0 to 255. Default is 1. Which one is var character here? Let me show. Var character here, you can also set its size, maximum size, by the way. A variable length string can contain letters, numbers, and special characters. The size parameter specifies the maximum column length in characters, can be from 0 to 65,535. Okay, then there is binary. Equal to char, but stores binary byte strings. The size parameter specifies the column length in bytes. Default is 1. Equal to varchar, but stores binary byte strings. The size parameter specifies the maximum column length in bytes. Then tiny blob. Okay, these are, by the way, not... SQL, yes, this is MySQL. Let's look for Microsoft SQL. Okay, now this is more appropriate. Okay, character and set with character can be maximum 8000 characters. Then var character and variable with character string like this. Then var character max. Okay, if you want unlimited variable holding, then it is this one var character max. You see, it can hold up to 1 billion characters then there is text you see it can even hold up to 2 gigabyte of text data by the way this is the storage they are taking if you define var character it has a two bytes overhead and the number of characters that in your storage value if you define var character max same two bytes overhead and number of characters if you define text it has four bytes overhead number of characters if you define and charge it has no overhead but it is defined with uh, multiply two then there is and var character then there is binary var binary and image you see these are the types then the numeric types bit okay bit is very useful because we use bit data type for storing boolean values you see if it is zero it is false if it is one it is true it can be also null, but in C sharp it cannot be null. Then there is tiny int. Tiny int can hold between 0 and 255. Then there is small int. You see it is signed by the way. So this is equal to int 16 in C sharp. Then there is int. Then there is big int. You see this is also int uh, 64 in C sharp. Then there is decimals. Decimals is really important. So with fixed precision and scale numbers, decimals are defined with P and S. Then there is numeric. Okay, let's read the decimal first. Fixed precision and scale numbers allows numbers from minus 10 to the power of 38 plus 1 to 10 to the power of 38 minus 1. The P parameter indicates the maximum total number of digits that can be stored both to the left and to the right of the decimal point. P must be a value from 1 to 38. Default is 18. The S parameter indicates the maximum number of digits stored to the right of the decimal point. 
s must be a value from 0 to p, default value is 0. Okay, then there is numeric. Yes, we have decimal and numeric. So what is the difference between numeric and decimal? Approximate numeric data types do not store the exact values specified for many numbers. They store an extremely close approximation of the value. TechNet, avoid using float or real columns in where clause search conditions, especially the equals and less than greater than operators, TechNet. So generally, because the precision provided by decimal is 10e38 to 38 digits, if your number can fit in it, and smaller storage space, and maybe speed of float is not important, and dealing with abnormal behaviors and issues of approximate numeric types are not acceptable, use decimal generally. Numeric equals decimal 5 to 17 bytes exact numeric data type will map to decimal in .NET both have 18, 0 as default precision scale parameters in SQL Server scale equals maximum number of decimal digits that can be stored to the right of the decimal point. Kindly note that money 8 byte and small money 4 byte are also exact and mapped to decimal in .NET and have four decimal points MSDN, decimal and numeric, transact SQL MSDN. I think you should use decimal instead of numeric. Decimal is equal to decimal in C sharp. Okay, let's continue. And there is small money. I have never used there is money. Okay, you see if you use money, hold this kind of position. Then there is floating. Okay, then there is date time, which can hold date with the accuracy of 3.33 milliseconds. Then there is date time to accuracy of nanoseconds, small date time, date, time, and other things. As you use SQL Server, you will get to know them better. Student name, I define it as Anvar character. Why? There is also character and Anvar character. And means that you can hold non ANSI character. What I mean is, if you don't use an char, then you cannot save non ANSI characters such as this one. So you need to use non ANSI characters. You have to use an version of character in SQL Server. Okay. How much character would be the person name? Let's say 200. And do we allow nulls? No. And then what else we have? We have email of students. So emails should be character because they are only English letters. We have the genders. Gender is Boolean. Therefore, I will keep it as bit. I mean this. Let's say is male. Do we allow nulls? No. We can also set default values. So I will set the male character default value is zero. When you set default values, then if you don't provide that default value, the default value will be used, obviously. So you don't have to provide the value of default value having columns. If you don't set the default value and if you don't allow null, then you cannot insert records with nulls. Let's uh, define another column which we will allow nulls. Something that students may not have or may have. What can be? What kind of feature we can add? that can be null or not. Let's say nickname. So the nickname will be Anwar character and 250 and I will allow nulls. So when I click save with control S or here, it will ask me the name of the table. I will name the table as TBL student. Okay, the first table of our application is generated. When I click tables here and click refresh, you see it is here. Now I can see the records inside it. How? Right click, select top, and it will return me the top 1000 rows by default like this with this query. You see currently we have nothing. Okay, so what does this query mean? This means that there is select. Select means select. Top means top X results. So we may have 10 million records in the table, but we only want to return top 1000. But top according to what, if you wonder, it is by default sorting currently because we didn't sort our select with anything. And if you leave it to default sorting, each time you pick top X records, they may be different because you are not providing any sorting. Okay, this is the syntax. We provide the column names. If your column is something like this, then you don't need to put these brackets. However, if your column is, let's say something like this, then you have to provide the brackets. Okay, personally, I prefer to write column names like this, so I don't need to 
provide brackets as well but you may use them with brackets okay from from where from school database from dbo and tbl students select star from tbl students this so after you made a change to your database tables then you go to edit and intellisense and refresh local cache so intellisense will work better alternatively you can close sql server management studio and reopen it so now it shows me intellisense shows me the column names like this okay first you should do your database design with sql server management studio because it is much easier than doing with code then you can write your code let's open our application and generate some random data and insert it into our table first from sql server management studio okay i click test okay so let's insert our first record. How am I going to do that? I am opening a new query window here. To insert, we use insert into. Insert into which table? Currently, you see my database is selected here. Therefore, I don't have to write something like this. Because my database is defined. Therefore, I don't need to type it. However, if it was something like this, then I would we have to define a SQL DB or and tbs students okay you see the difference in your programming if you have defined your database in your query we will see that then you don't have to type this however if you didn't define your database name like school then you have to write the full path okay this is about writing the full path of your table or not so insert into tbs students okay then i define the column names okay which column names I will provide. I will provide student ID, then student name, then student email, mail. I don't have to provide mail or nickname. Why? Because the mail has default value and nickname can be null. Okay, so I will write different cases. This is the first case. You see currently it is showing me as invalid object name. Why? Because the database is not selected. So I am selecting school. Then I type the values like this. Okay. Now when you are providing a string value, you have to use beginning like this. Okay. What if, if you want to use single quote character, then you escape it like this. You see? So this one is escaping this one and this is the beginning of string and this is the end of the string. so let me show an example the first one is integer therefore i can just something like this or you can also define it as string it will be automatically converted into integer by the sql server however it is better to write integer so let's write this one okay whatever it is not simple something like this then you see i am separating values with comma then student name so it is string therefore i am writing the student name like this however if i want to something like this then i have to escape this one like this and since i have special characters you better put an letter in front of your string and means that now you can insert non-ascii characters as well so let's make some different examples i will make it like this so this is non ascii character write the email email is string to uh, when you click execute it will execute all the queries written here or alternatively you can choose the query like this and you can click execute this time it will only execute the selected query so i'm executing and here's the result it says that one row affected that means that one row is generated because this is insert query then i will select the records here right click select top 1000 rows okay i see my record is inserted into database okay it appears that it is able to insert this one maybe do it collision setup or do it to sql server management new version or let's try some other characters okay bigger i uh, it is not existing in english let's try this okay one another row let's refresh okay it is added as well but you should always use n character okay so what does n means what is the purpose of putting an n in front of function parameters in tsql it indicates a nationalized aka unicode string constant when dealing with unicode string constants in sql server you must precede all unicode strings with a capital letter n as documented in the sql server books online topic using unicode data okay so it is coming from nationalized text it was available in sql 92 before unicode even exists so this is the meaning of n Currently, it is working in my 
SQL Server Management Studio, but previously it wasn't working. I am sure. So this is probably something new. So this is the first case, first example, and by default they are provided as zero, as you can see. So this was the first version of the cert. Then now let's provide default value as well because it was being incorrect. Okay, and now the third version where we provide all column names name say okay you see now i have to scroll horizontally i think we can fix it with probably text editor on language word wrap okay now it is wrapping the final version in this case we won't provide any column names but you have to provide exactly as same number of inputs this works however this would fail okay this fails this fails because we didn't provide exactly same number of values i remember okay you see i will just comment this out you can execute all of them with execute you see all of them inserted now if we select we can see all of them let's make some randomization so we can do some select and where queries okay this and i will also generate some random numbers so let's add some randomization ids each time the oh they are all zero so i see so it is generating maybe since it was an integer it was getting used so let's remove the person these are not the key issues i am just generating so see it and even append name okay we have some random okay now you see we have 74 chords and they are just the values we have so now let's make some select queries select then i have to define column names which ones i want to select if i put star it means that it will select everything from which table students table since school database is selected then i don't have to write the full path if it was something like this then i would be have to as uh, school.dbo.tbs now this will select everything as you see let's say i want to select student id from student so first i write the from then i can also define it like student id or like this since there isn't any other table in my query there isn't no duplicate names so both would work so you see it is just selecting the student id this is the way of selecting columns i can also select like this as you see okay this is about select we are defining the columns here i can also format them as i want gg plus student name yeah you see gg is appended string okay as you can see i think we can even append integers however to append it probably we need to cast this as var collecting there is cast method taking okay there is n convert target type expression date styles mode in this target type is var charge expression is student id then date styles mode in yeah it is working as you see now okay this is about select we have seen the insert then we will see the where let's say you have millions of records and you want to only select 13 of them then we use where class it is like select all from tbs students where student id is bigger than let's say this number so this is our like if class this is bigger than selected it will select only the records which has student id bigger than this or i can select it like select all from tbl students where nickname not equal to null if you type like this this wouldn't work in sql server because null is not equal to null you cannot compare nulls like this so what i need to do is i have to select it something like this from tbl students where nickname is not okay so you can use is or is not null okay this returns is not null i can also use as is null and this will return null you see i can use multiple where clauses such as student id bigger than that or i can say bigger or equal i can say and or is not null let's make it an and so let's see this one so this one returns either bigger than this student id or not null here as you can see alternatively let's try this so this returns only the records which are bigger than and is not null this returns bigger than that or is not null i can also make it like this or and is male equal to one okay now in this case you see you have or and query how will it behave you see it returns 52 because it is checking 
or an or is breaking and therefore you need to group the things that you want to or okay something like this so it will check either bigger than this this and then this row okay so this one returns 43 this one returns 52 this one returns 16 so you see how you are writing your query affects your results then finally there is delete query delete from tbr students i can delete all records or i can use where such as i want to delete this particular record where student id equal to so this will delete this record okay let's select the record let's find it actually let's select the record with this one select all from tbs students where student id equal to this okay when i select it returns this record and after i delete it it will tell me that one row affected that means that one row is deleted because it is delete query and if i run it again you see zero rows because it's already deleted and when i select it you see it is returning nothing okay these are the queries that um, save them as well so you may want to get them however it, it would be much better if you write them yourself over the time you will understand better how to write queries queries okay it says that save with other encode so i will save it as utf8 here is that there is no u here i will save it as utf8 i will save this as well select where delete okay now we have seen how to do queries from new query execute then we can also edit rows you see it allows me to edit top 200 rows i can also change that i think from designer here okay here you should remove this if you want to save some changes such as for example let me show you i click design and i want to change the student email to let's say like this when i click save it says that saving changes is not permitted the changes you have made require the following tables to go with the robot and recreated you have either made changes to a table that can't be recreated or such then i go to options i go to designs and here i remove this checkbox and i also increase the timeout because some changes may take too much time okay then i click save and it is saved and another thing is i think maybe text editor no here okay sql server object explorer you can change for example select top 1000 to top 5000 and you can change this edit to top uh, 2000 rows i can also change this 5000 yes okay now when i right click you see select 5000 top rows and when i click i can edit top 2000 rows i can change their values here or i can add here or i can right click and delete here i can copy here and such uh, so these are the things that you can do with sql server management studio there are also other tools such as sql provider and azure data studio and such however they are more advanced things i can also compose another table see so you can have multiple tables as time goes and we progress through our lectures we will see more about that so now it is time to do these operations within our code so it is a common mistake that students are writing inline code in their program what i mean is for example if you want to insert records into the database wherever you want to do that you write that code there for example i can change it here and after you make the changes you have to click another row it will be updated it is modified but not saved when i click here it is now saved this is an important thing to reopen okay now okay now working you, you see i can change the boolean values with zero however when you are filtering your results as is mail equal to zero still works when making queries i wonder if it's working yeah it is also working okay maybe it is, yeah either way works here but when you click here actual execute plan it show you how the plan works it is an advanced stuff it's doing tables because we don't have any indexes we will see later queries okay by the way we didn't show the update command so i will show you that as well Let's open a new query window select top records okay so when you are updating either you have to have some 
unique value is to update certain records or it would update everything so what i mean is let me show you to update it you write as update and then the updating table name so update tbs student set then set set means that which columns we will change by the way you can think this as value as kept in an excel table it is very similar However, in the background, they are very different, but from the usability perspective, I mean. So let's set the student name equal to new student email, student email equal to new email at mail.com. And if I don't write a where, it will change all records because there is no where predicate. So let's try this. I am selecting this query and running. So it has affected. 73 rows when i select it you will see that all records are changed to this if i want to change this record can i change it only that one right now no because this record has no unique identifier because there are multiple records like this let me illustrate that okay select star from tbl students where student id is equal to zero and then student name is equal to new student as you see i am using and predicate so student email is equal to new email okay is mail and is mail equal to one and nickname is no let's see how many duplicate records that okay there are seven so whenever i make an update to each one of these rows it would update all of them i cannot update any particular of them because there is no unique identifier however for example, I can update this record probably because its student ID looks like unique. Let's uh, check it out from TBS students where student ID is this. And when I select, you see there is only one row. I can update that particular student with unique student ID of some mail. And then I write my condition as student ID is equal to this one so you see this is how it works i can also add all records let me show you so it has affected one row i will write this as well so you will understand this will update seven records so i am adding all these where requirements when i run it these seven rows are okay let's also use or and in okay okay students let's say multiple students students say multiple okay where student id is this or this or student id is this or student id this so when i execute it will update three rows i could also write this query as you see it is automatically formatting so what i'm going to do is you can also write this query as like the student id in when you type in you can define multiple variables like this okay here and here okay so when i run this query you see it has affected three rows so this is basically same as this one you get the idea now if you want to update particular records then you have to have a unique identifier to that record database records okay so let's comment this if you want to update delete insert select particular database records then you have to have a unique identifier or a certain combination of multiple columns that uniquely identifies that particular record this is the way you can do it we will continue next week i am also date where queries as well okay when to write pull pads how to make insert update the rest select queries unless by the way there is no insert and okay at home please write everything yourself as i am doing watching by me while watching the video and not just use the copy and not just use the code i am uploading to our github repository so let me upload the code sorry if you have any questions uh, please ask me from uh, discord the databases are extremely important part of programming so you should pay extra attention to database related lectures okay you see the code is uploaded now you can access it txt uh, files query files everything is here all right we have shown everything we have shown so many things in this lecture end of the lecture hopefully see you next week